The next collection class that we're going to look at is called the stack. Stacks maintain a list of items just like arrays and array lists do, but they operate on a slightly different paradigm called push on and pop off. And you can think of a stack as like in fast food restaurants, they have those cup stacks where, you know, they push all the cups into the holder and then each time a person takes a cup, it pops off the top. Stacks are pretty much the same way. Stacks are declared by using the stack class. So to declare a stack, I would use the stack class and then my stack is the variable name. This is probably familiar by now. I say new stack and that'll create a stack object out in memory. To put data on the stack, I use the push method to push data on the stack. And remember, these are objects. So I can pass any primitive type or any reference type, anything I can come up with. In this case, I'll just push a string called string one. What that will do is that will put string one onto the top of the stack. If I then push another piece of data, say string two, what will happen is string one will slide down and string two will now be the new top. And I can keep on doing this with successive pieces of data. I could have strings three, four, five, and so on. To get the data off the stack, instead of using push, I use pop. So I would declare an object variable, and in this case it's called O, and then I would call my stack dot pop. This will get the top value on the stack. So after calling pop, string two pops off, and then string one slides back on up, and now the value of O is the string two. If I wanted to just see what was on top of the stack without changing it, I would use the peak method. This looks at the top value, but doesn't actually pop it off. And then finally, I can see how many things there are on the stack by asking the stack's count property how many things there are. And in this case, it will tell me that there's one item on the stack. Stacks are commonly referred to as LIFO, last in, first out data structures, because the things that you push onto the stack earlier get pushed down towards the bottom, and later elements are nearer the top. So as you pop them off, those items are going to come out first. So it's last in and first out. And again, stacks are one of the common data structures you'll find throughout programs for various purposes. Let's go ahead and jump over to the coding environment and actually exercise this to see how it works. Okay, so here in the code, I've scrolled down to my stacks section in my example snippets. And I've got my stacks project open over here with my main function. Let's go ahead and copy some code over. So the first thing I'm going to copy over is this setup code right here. And I'm going to paste that in. Right there on line 13, you can see that I'm declaring a new stack variable. And then I'm pushing some data on the stack. I'm pushing strings, items 1, 2, and 3. And then I'm just going to write out how many items there are on the stack by using the mystack.count property. So we're going to run this. And you can see that, sure enough, there are three items on the stack. Okay, so far so good. Let's go back over to the code. Now let's have a peek at what the top item is. So we're going to copy that and we'll paste that below here. Now remember, peak is non-destructive. In other words, it doesn't actually change the stack. It just shows me what's on the top. So we'll run this and you can see that item three is on the top. Why? Because item three was the last item pushed on. Therefore, it will be at the top of the stack. All right, so far things are operating the way they're supposed to. Let's go ahead and try popping something. And I'll go ahead and paste that code in down here. So now here on line 23, you can see I'm calling the pop function, which is going to pop item three off the top of the stack, which means that item two will now be the top item. So when I write this out, it should say item two. So let's run this. Yep, sure enough, item two is now the top of the stack. Okay, let's go back to the snippets over here. One more thing. And we'll paste that code in here. So now I'm going to call the stacks clear function right here on line 27. And that will get rid of everything on the stack. It will clear out the contents. And then when I call my stack.count, I should have the value zero. So let's press F5. And sure enough, I've got zero items on the stack. You'll find stacks used throughout C sharp programs and other programming languages in general. They're pretty useful for keeping track of certain kinds of data structures, mathematical expression evaluation, and so on. There's a couple of great examples. So that's how you use stacks.